What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 32. We start today to stop with a scouting update and also an academy update as well. At the moment there's not really too much to report, no one's been picked up from our uh, two months worth of scouting from France, the Republic of Ireland and also England as well. And I mentioned before, I am I am very selective, I'm the first to admit this, I, I cherry pick like crazy. I only want the creme de la creme for my academy, I always feel it's just the best way to go. If you have a scout with 5 star experience, you'll get an abundance of youth players sent to you month after month so you can afford to be picky when there's so much choice out there. That works for a lot of things in life, dating included. Not on my end, unfortunately. But uh, anyway, as we look at our fixtures for October, as you can see, Norwich and Leeds away this month, along with Spurs at home as well. It's a very quiet month of October as Gutierrez is coming back from his injury as well. And also a loan bid for Lorenzen. Mentioned this briefly in the last episode. Uh, obviously, I, I know what I'm doing wrong now. You've got to delegate these loan offers. When you get a loan to buy, don't negotiate and try and take the buy option out because it just won't happen. The AI manager will always walk out. I think it's a bug, but if you delegate, then they'll normally accept it nine times out of ten. And also, this is really interesting. Speaking of bugs, do you remember I was talking about Stanley Young and how we were trying to train him to become a left midfielder? It was only supposed to take two weeks, and after two months, nothing had happened. So I took him off the development plan, tried to retrain him as a left wing back that was supposed to take half a year, and then it said the position change option was available for me for him to turn into a left midfielder. I was like, I just took him off the development plan. I literally took him off another one, on and on to another one. And they said, nope, the old development plan's completed now, even though we're not working on it. I have no idea what's going on there, but Stanley Young is now an official left midfielder. The defensive work rate is up from uh, low to medium. I'm going to get up to high, so we'll have those high, high work rates. Keep increasing that stamina and that pace as well. And this guy is going to be absolutely perfect for the left wing back slash left mid roll in this Brentford 3-5-2 slash 5-3-2. I've got, I got to say, I'm excited. I'm really excited about Ashley Young's nephew. Decent start for him. Looks pretty good. And I'm pretty pleased so far with what I've seen in terms of his growth as well. Still for the first game of today's episode on the back of the late win against Chelsea. Well, back-to-back -back late wins against Wolves and then Chelsea. No losses in our last four Premier League games. Great start to the season. Only one defeat in our opening seven. Sat in the top three right now. Now taking on Daniel Farkas Norwich. Currently sitting bottom of the table after their return to the Premier League. Really frustrating game. Didn't get many chances in this one. But 61 minutes in in a, well, let's just say wet turf here at Cow Road. I couldn't really utilize the pace and in the end back from injury second goal of the season right back in the team he doesn't take long Roberto the goal machine Gutierrez celebrating in front of the traveling fans and yeah second goal of the season oh, sorry third goal of the season for Gutierrez all three of his goals have come away from home including this one the game winner Roberto bangs it in and yeah, I'm quite quite nonchalant about this, but guys, that's our first clean sheet of the season. <laughs> get in. You have no idea how happy I was to get that. Sangare was a rock at the back in this game as well, adjusting to life in the Premier League pretty nicely. But there we go. The wait is over at the 10th attempt in all competitions. Brentford have picked up a clean sheet. Yeah, I said at the start of the season, I want either Raya to win the Golden Glove or someone to win the assist title or the Golden Boot. I think it's pretty unlikely David Ray is going to make a case to win the Golden Glove this year, which is ironic because, of course, last season he was only one clean sheet away from doing that. But there's our first of the year, long overdue, but finally our first shutout in the Premier League. Still following that, uh, you can see that Lorenzen's loan deal is going to go through in January. Two-year loan deal to FC Basel. I really like that for a location for him to go to as well. And also Brian and Buemo, another big bid for our French attacking midfielder. How when in the summer from Mets, he was out of contract at the end of this season. I talked about it. Was he going to get a new deal after two relatively subpar seasons at Brentford? But I also talked about it as well. He's transitioning from a winger to an attacking midfielder. It takes some time. I believe in Buemo. He's had a good start this season. Season. So we said to Real Sociedad, appreciate the offer, uh, offer guys, but he's not going anywhere. Still for the second game of today's episode, Spurs coming to take us on at the Community Stadium. Here's this game against Nuno's side. If we are to be a Europa League side for next season, these are the sides we need to battle with. But heading into this game, I knew it would be a tough task because this man right now is on fire. The former Fox, now with Spurs, 
Harvey Barnes, top scorer in the Premier League and looking absolutely unstoppable. Fired the visitors into the lead in the first half. Didn't really get going until the second half. Don't know if I need to put a rocket on my players' backsides in the dressing room. I need to do something because just wasn't really playing with any sort of urgency. So in the second half, started getting chances, mainly down his left-hand side. Rico Henry denied early in the second half and then 67 minutes in, Rico doesn't miss twice. Henry smacks it into the far corner after the Ivan Tony through ball. And Rico Henry is such an underrated player in this team, man. Seriously, he offers a lot on the offensive end. Had one of the most assists in the Premier League last year. And he's also really solid at the back as well. Signed that big extension at the start of last season. He's going nowhere. So, Brentford won. Spurs won. Back on level terms. And it was such an interesting game as well. Because we weren't exactly playing badly. But every time Spurs got a chance, I thought they'd score. And with 14 minutes to go, they did just that once again. Harry Kane playing the one-two with Harvey Barnes right now who literally can't stop scoring. Gets his second of the game makes it 2-1 and restores the lead. But I kept on attacking down the left that's where we were getting the joy and with a minute and a half to go Tom Davis finds Ivan Tony. Ball rolls around Harry Winks. Goes for goal. Shot block. Keeps the chance alive Davis with the back heel. Tony gets it out of his feet and bends it in with 30 seconds on the clock to give us a point How many times have I said this? Not just in this series, but in my Sheffield United Fever 20 career mode as well. Ivan Tony comes up big late on. How many times has he done this for us? He's done it again. Ivan Tony in the last minute rescues a point and ensures we still have only had one defeat all season. I'm going to stats come full time as well. It's so frustrating. Much higher XG than our opponents. Spurs took two shots in the game but scored with both of them. Harvey Barnes 10 goals in nine. What a start for Ivan Tony but he's chasing Barnes right now who literally just can't stop scoring including in that game. And yeah I, I know I've mentioned it a few times before and I I know I sound like a bit of a broken record when I say it, but I do believe personally EA needs to look into this a little bit. How many times do you see the AI beat you or gain a point against you when they've scored with every single shot, but they've only taken like one or two, whereas you've taken an abundance, have a much higher XG, but you can only manage to get the point or sometimes none. It's really frustrating. And yes, it does happen in football, but at the rate it happens in this year's FIFA, it's quite unrealistic. Anyway, for the third game of today's episode, away from home, final one of September, Ellen Road leads United. Struggled here before. We always seem to come up against Messelier, who's just on fire. Made a great save here as it was still 0-0. But 31 minutes in, into an action-packed first half an hour. A chance just to get in front. Roberto rolls for Ivan Tony. Down the left. Heavy first touch. Messelier makes the save. But Roberto Gutierrez flicks it in. He only scores on the road. Fourth of the season for our number seven. And it's Gutierrez, the goal machine, who gives us the opener. And I love that as well. You had to see that on the second replay to really appreciate what he did there. He flicked it in with the left boot, but he used his right leg to shield the ball from the covering defender. It was just such an intelligent flick from Gutierrez. I'll tell you, this boy plays with some passion. He plays with fire, but he's a smart character as well. Scores the opener, turning in the rebound. Brentford in front of eight minutes to go. Oh, yeah. Ivan Tony right now going for that golden boot. Already his eighth of the season. The shocker wraps up the points. Leeds nil, Brentford 2. Great cross by Tariq Lamptey down the right-hand side as well. He has been an amazing pickup from recently relegated Brighton. And Brentford doubled their lead. Unfortunately, the clean sheet would go in stoppage time, though. You can see Raya was so fuming after that goal there as well. Not really surprised because... But at the moment, I just, I can't shut teams out. I know we shut Norwich out, but they're the only team we kept a clean sheet against. But I guess the philosophy remains the same. If we can't defend, all we can do is just keep on outscoring our opponents. And at the moment, it's working. Two on the final score, we get the three points. It's our dynamic duo of Roberto and Ivan to get the goals. And there you go, we end October in second place. Two points behind Arsenal, still only the one defeat and four above Manchester United and Leicester in third and fourth. And five clear of Spurs in fifth. I mean, I'm kind of downplaying this because I feel like I need to. But at the start of the season, the board said Europa League. Now, you see our fixture in November, the Saints, Burnley, Watford and Newcastle, the Magpies at St. James's Park as well. You said that's a reasonably favourable run of fixtures there. The Newcastle game, we didn't want to a good start of the season. Probably the toughest of the lot. But Champions League? Top four? I mean, at the start of the season, I was thinking Europa Conference League or top ten. I'd probably take that. But now I'm starting to think, after our red-hot start, can we really get in 
to the Champions League. But if this guy keeps on scoring, the sky is the limit. Another goal in as many games for Ivan Tony, three minutes into our clash against Ralph Hassan at Southampton and the skipper is single-handedly dragging us in to the Champions League at this current pace. Brentford in front, it's the shocker with the opener. That's the least shocking thing about this game. And 12 minutes in, Stanley Young having a great start to his debut year for us. Almost got his first Premier League goal. Great save there as it was still... 1-0. And that was how the game will finish as well. Really interesting game, but I've been bemoaning our lack of clean sheets. In this game, we got one. The Saints couldn't take a single shot in the game. I played some lockdown defense. I think I was just so frustrated after conceding quite a few late goals recently in games where we should have wrapped up clean sheets, like in that game there against Leeds and against Chelsea recently as well. I was just not prepared today to drop in this game. And after that win there, you can see Brentford are top of the table 11 games in. So let's just keep it calm. Let's just keep it cool. We went away on the international break, leading the Premier League. And i got to say, I don't know how much longer we can keep this up. But at the moment, it feels amazing. Brentford, not only in the top four, but in pole position. And for our final game of today's episode, first one back from the international break. Sean Dyche's Clarets away at Turf Moor, taking on newly promoted Burnley after their relegation back in season one. Where they take the lead very early on and get themselves in front. Rui Diaz scored the first and he scored the second as well. Not normally what you call a Sean Dyche signing, Rui Diaz. But that's FIFA career mode for you. Bangs in the second, 28 minutes in. And after a great clean sheet against Southampton. And our second in our last three games. Yeah, I was frustrated to know we were 2-0 down 28 minutes in. And the clean sheet streak was going to end here. Tried to get back in the game. And as you can see here, after a bit of a scramble 58 minutes in. God knows what Nick Pope was doing. We would get ourselves the deficit half for Ivan Tony. Unfortunately, the celebrations were cut short. Yeah, 13 minutes after the restart, Lionel's flag is up. And it was correctly ruled out for us. I thought at first it was on. But as you can see there, it's that left leg. That left leg from Tony stretches out. It's the right call. Frustration for the captain. He wanted another goal to keep on scoring in consecutive games but that one ruled out and rightly so so still 2-0 Burnley wasn't playing badly but the common problem was there for all to see once again I literally just could not defend Ray made a great save here 66 minutes in but the chance was kept alive and Rui Diaz wrapped up the points and the match ball and the champagne as well hat-trick for Burnley's number 15 as they go 3-0 up on Brentford. Now I was thinking for all the games for our unbeaten run to end in, we have gone eight games unbeaten after our loss to Everton. We were in fantastic form, playing really good football, leading the league. I was thinking newly promoted Burnley. Yeah, we're away from home, but this should be a win in the end. A very big loss. We did grab the consolation goal. Ivan Tony's run continues, but it was nothing other than that. 3-1 the final score. Rui Diaz tears us apart with a hat-trick. Burnley 3, Brentford 1, and our lead at the top of the table goes after just one game week. It was nice while it lasted, but it didn't last long. But hey, we're still in the top four, and I'm still sitting there thinking Champions League. Let's go get it. Yeah, let's go get it. I know it's a big defeat there. It's only our second defeat of the season, though. Let's get the Champions League. I mean, Europa League is what the board want. That would be a dream for me as well. But right now, we're in second place. We're only two points off Arsenal. We've had an amazing start. Think big. Think big, be ambitious, and dream big. But that was this episode of Career Mode, guys. So big fan for what you have. Enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode featuring some massive games very soon.